So, uh, hello and welcome. Um, a few days ago I looked at uh, small sugar crystals uh, in honey using a polarized light. Uh, but in uh, honey is also quite interesting to observe because there are also, or there could also be pollen grains um, inside the honey. Pollen that the bees collected uh, while they were collecting nectar. And now the density of the pollen in the honey might not be very high, so what I have to do is I have to dilute uh, this honey with water. And then I want to try to centrifuge uh, the honey solution using using a hand centrifuge, okay? Um, and uh, then uh, this uh, concentrates uh, the pollen and then I can actually, I hope to be able to do this at least, and then I can uh, observe the pollen under the microscope. And this is what I'm gonna show you now in this video. Well, the first thing that we have to do is, is we have to get the pollen out of the honey. And uh, I'm basically pouring in a little bit of water, approximately 10 mils, um, into a cup. Uh, and uh, I'm adding a little bit of honey here and I'm dissolving the honey um, inside uh, the, with the water. Of course, this uh, will, of course, uh, dissolve the sugar and set the pollen free. And this takes a couple of minutes um, and when everything's properly dissolved I'm pouring uh, the solution back into the tube. Unfortunately as you can see I'm spilling uh, a little bit but it's okay because I still have uh, enough of the solution left. And then I need uh, to make a counterweight um, and I'm just using pure water uh, for the counterweight and uh, I'm putting everything into the hand uh, centrifuge, uh, the counterweight and then the honey solution and then I need to spin everything and I was spinning everything for approximately three to five minutes. Yeah. And it was a little bit stuck at the beginning so I had to kind of get it started. Yeah. And now it's uh, rotating relatively quickly. Yeah. So as I said, a couple of minutes. And uh, then um, after a few minutes, yeah, you can see that there's unfortunately a small crack uh, in the tube. So that's not a good thing because it's dangerous, it might break. Uh, but then uh, basically all of the pollen or most of them have are collected at the very bottom and I'm carefully now removing the so-called supernatant. So basically the liquid at the top. Um, and I'm using this with a pipette uh, and uh, this way I'm not disturbing the pollen which has collected on the very bottom of the tube. Unfortunately my pipette was not long enough so I'm now removing more water with uh, some tissue paper. So I need a longer pipette obviously. And I'm leaving a little bit of uh, water behind, uh, maybe half a milliliter. Or mil yeah. And I'm now basically uh, tapping the tube to resuspend the pollen in uh, this uh, small amount of water because the pollen is actually sticking on the glass. And um, pretty self-explanatory what I'm doing here. I'm taking a drop and I'm putting um, a drop uh, on the slide and then of course a cover glass. And then everything goes under the microscope. Okay. Yeah, so it goes under the microscope. Oops, and mm, gotta try it again. And then let's see what we find. And uh, sure enough, yeah, there were plenty of pollen. That's how they looked like, okay. And uh, this is now um, at uh, with a 20x um, objective. And uh, all of the subsequent uh, yeah, videos here I did with the 60x uh, objective. And uh, you can see me focusing in and out. I added some digital zooms just to make it a little bit nicer to look at. But there were many different uh, pollen shapes uh, that I found. Some of them looked kind of irregular. Um, like this one over here. Yeah, I'm zooming back, uh, not zooming, I'm, I'm, I'm focusing back and forth so that you can actually, it looks like, like a Mickey Mouse a little bit. Yeah. So there were, um, yeah, uh, quite, uh, quite a lot of these pollen um, on the, uh, yeah, in the water drop. And this one, I don't know, seemed to have already popped open. Maybe it's starting to form a so-called pollen tube. I'm not sure about that. But, uh, so maybe the pollen tube starts to grow ready to fertilize the plant. And some of them are also triangular in shape. So you can actually see that the pollen did come from different uh, plant species. Now I'm not really good at identifying the plants uh, that the pollen came from. That's something that uh, we better leave up to the experts here. I'm just more fascinated in observing nature, but I don't really know much about the pollen identification. It's a pretty advanced topic anyway. 
Yeah, so that should have given you a short insight into the different uh, pollen from honey. Well, um, how important is uh, centrifuging now? Can you not just uh, simply do without it? And I think not, uh, because uh, centrifuging collects, uh, concentrates on all of the pollen here at the tip. And what I did is I put a drop of uh, solution from the top here under the microscope and I did not find any pollen. So even the short time that I was spinning um, the tubes for about three minutes was already enough to concentrate the pollen um, all the way at the tip here. Now, if you don't have a hand centrifuge like this, uh, what you can try to do is you can try to make one yourself. Um, I tried uh, to make one myself, I did not test it yet, I'm also going to do that. Um, and yeah, um, that is basically uh, pretty much it. Uh, that's everything I wanted to show you today. You can see that simple preparation steps uh, um, are already enough uh, and you can quite see a lot of interesting things. Um, I wish you in any case uh, all the best, happy microbe hunting as always and have a nice day. Bye bye. <laughs>